this year because I don't see it on this one. It's okay if I, you know, we're not actually started quite yet, so I don't see it on this yet. Why don't you come around over here and just walk over here and make sure I can see it on here. See if you can figure that out because um, I'm on my home page. everyone welcome to the live call here we're just a few minutes before 11 a.m. mountain daylight time so I thought I would just um, get this started just a few minutes early so if you're coming on thank you for being here um, I know it's a Saturday you're taking out valuable time on your day but the topic of today's call is making cold wax medium and um, you may have your PDF already printed out that's awesome if you do be you know have a pen with you because you might want to be jotting down some notes there will be some things I talk about that, you know, I, I didn't put every little detail into the PDF. So that's the advantage of being on a live call. Um, the disadvantage for me is that obviously if, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to edit the call. So you might catch a few bloopers. Um, uh, this is a different style of call for me. If you like um, the idea of a YouTube live and there will be some prize giveaways if you like all that kind of stuff. Hit like that'd be awesome thank you um, and also by hitting like I know you you attended the call it's good for me to know kind of how many people were actually on the call live um, I'm gonna check the time we are gonna start on time and okay it's now 11 a.m. mountain daylight time welcome everybody this is Pamela Coley I'm in my studio as you can see and I've got a lot of stuff here um, the topic of today's live YouTube call is how to make your own cold wax medium what motivated, motivated me to uh, make this call is that I got some emails and you know information from people who live in other countries and they just cannot access things like this, which is Gamblin's cold wax medium. Okay, it's really great when you can buy these things, but you know what if you can't buy it? What if you don't have access to this? And there are some countries around the world, like Mexico, anywhere in Europe, it may be a little hard for you to find it. So that inspired me to do this YouTube live. And um, if you're watching this call, um, thank you for joining me again. And please hit like if you like the idea of YouTube Lives because at this point I can either do a YouTube Live or I can do these calls that are highly um, edited and that's what I've been doing in the past. So this is kind of an experiment for me. So thanks for your patience. I can already tell you it's not gonna be perfect because that's the way these live calls are. I can't edit it. But um, my purpose today then is to talk about um, the ingredients and the process of how to how to do this, how to make your own cold wax medium. Now, um, just a couple of things that I want to point out is um, when we're getting started here, and um, first of all, thank you to my assistant who's here, my helper. Um, he's manning the camera, he's moving the camera forward, and uh, I was joking with him, if I make any mistakes, I'm blaming it on him. <laughs> but anyways, his name is Joey, and he's awesome. Okay, so, um, now I do want to mention that I do have this PDF. Okay. So, uh, the PDF has instructions, um, the recipe, as well as a supply list with links to where you can find these items that I'm going to talk about. How do you get the PDF? If you don't already have it, you go to my website, www.artandsuccess.com. And then you click on this, um, image that says free videos and tutorials. Okay. Now, once you're in there and it's, you, you enroll for free. So if you're not already enrolled, you're going to have to, you know, just enroll, but that's all free. And then you scroll all the way down to the bottom of that page. You're going to see all of my YouTube videos all categorized. Some of them have instructions, some have um, materials lists. That's the advantage of that section versus say just my YouTube channel. Um, because I thought that on YouTube, you know, things are kind of mixed up. Well, if I have it on art and success, you can find things more readily. So you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and it says um, live YouTube calls. So you look, there are only like three, I think right now, and you're gonna click on the one that says how to make your own cold wax medium. Click on that and then you can download both the PDF with instructions for what I'm doing today, as well as the supply list with links to where you can get the items that I'm showing you, most of them. 
And if you have the PDF in front of you, again, grab a pen because you're going to want to jot down some notes as I go. So um, again, about the prizes, um, you know, I, I like to share some of my favorite supplies. So over here, um, I just want to show you that I'm going to be giving away a whole quart of cold wax medium that I make. And this is going to be made with the ingredients that we're talking about today, okay? So um, it's, it's quite heavy. Therefore, it's gonna be sent to a US winner. I'm sorry, I can't send it internationally. This will be a US winner here. This is a Messermeister, one of my favorite tools. If you've watched my videos, you know how much I love the silicone tool. It's actually called a bowl scraper, but I've heard that some people in Europe cannot get it. So here it is, and this will be an international winner right here. Now this is a whole set of professional grade Gamblin oil colors, and it's an introductory set you can do my entire powerful design and personal color course with this set alone. Therefore, this is going to be shipped to a winner who's already in my course. The powerful design, powerful design and personal color featuring cold wax and oil. And that link, by the way, if you're interested in the course, is right on my homepage of artandsuccess.com. So I'm gonna put these away so that they're not cluttering the table here. Okay, now we're going to talk about something very, very um, important. Um, oh, one more thing, sorry. How do you enter the contest? That's kind of important. So after the call, this uh, demo is going to be available on my channel, YouTube Live. It takes a few minutes, so give it a few minutes and then you're gonna see it. Now, if you're looking at the video, you're gonna see a description right below it. In the description, as well as the very top comment, I'll have a link. Now that link is going to say entry form. You gotta click on the link, um, tell me your name and where you're located so that if you win, I know where to send you the freebie, okay? Because last time when I did the, the uh, thing, I, um, I struggled a little bit with like, well, where are these people located? So I had to kind of do this. Um, again, that will be uploaded right after this call. You have until 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time to go through the form and submit it because I'm trying to reward those who are on the live call. That way the form disappears after 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Guess what, if you're on the call, you're the only ones knowing this, okay? So I'm trying to reward those who attend the live call. So um, that's where you're gonna find the entry link and I'm gonna announce the winner tomorrow. You won't have to wait a week, okay? So I hope you like that. If you do like that, hit like, because I'd like to know how much you know, you're happy about the giveaways and the YouTube Lives. Again, I enjoy it, but um, I want to know if you enjoy it. All right, so. Okay. One thing that's so important when you start to do things like heating um, things like beeswax, because beeswax is one of our components. Um, this is, you can see on my table here. Um, you can't see it up close, but that's okay. I'm gonna explain all of what I have here. Number one, um, safety first, right? This is something that if you know me at all, you know that I'm always like trying to present the safest way to handle materials. And I would say that number one, if you're gonna make cold wax medium, you're going to be using beeswax. And now there are, if you go on YouTube Live or YouTube and um, search for how to make cold wax medium, you're gonna see about 10, 15, 20 different ways to do it. Um, I have not watched all of them. I've watched several of them. And I had to weigh, you know, would I be doing what they're doing? And um, what I decided was, and, and this is my process, okay? I wanna tell you that this is my process for doing things. I probably err on the side of being safe, safer, versus taking risk because I wanna avoid a fire. Um, so number one, have a fire extinguisher available and know how to use it because you might know what these look like and you might have bought one, but just make sure you know how to actually use it if you need it. If you have heated beeswax starting to like catch on fire, you're gonna be freaking out, right? So know what to do, know how to use it, and then make sure that it's kind of up to date. Like I have a guy coming to my studio and he actually comes like once a year, I think, to make sure that these things are full, that they're operable, all right? So that's one thing. This is a pretty big heavy duty one. You don't have to have such a big one, but anyway, so let's say that you're, you're sensitive to, you know, solvents, chemicals, um, that, that varies. But I happen to have this in my studio because there are times when I'm working with something that uh, 
essentially requires me to have the right kind of mask. And these are cartridges fit for organic vapors. It says right on the cartridge here, organic vapors. So if you walk into a Lois to get this, why would you use it? When would you use it? You would use it when and if you happen to be super sensitive to solvents and chemicals and things like that. Now, I'm not going to be wearing this during the demo. Um, I normally would not wear this anyways. I actually have very good ventilation. But um, this is something that if you're super sensitive, you might want to have this available. So, so the thing about it is you need really good ventilation. Now, in my studio, I've got, you know, these are installed. Uh, it's a very big installed ventilation system. You definitely need to have ventilation. All right. Now, do you have to go to this extent? Absolutely not. You do not need to do this. However, you need ventilation. So let's talk about that. Um, in your studio, you can prop open a window. You can prop open a door. What if you don't have a window or a door? Well, there are portable ventilation systems. If you go to my resources section of artandsuccess.com, I actually list a portable unit that I used to have in the old house before it burned down. Awesome, because it's on wheels. You can roll it around your studio. And considering it's protecting your health, it's a very wise investment. If you have any question that you're not ventilating properly, I would opt for that because that's what I did. I, I just felt like, you know what, when it comes to health, do you really want to take a risk? Do you really want to cut corners? The answer for me was no. So the portable unit, again, um, that is on my resources section, you can lift it up and put it on your table. If you're working with cold wax medium and oils and, you know, those vapors are bothering you, you turn it on and it's right next to your palate. It's taking all those fumes away. You can let it run over the night and you're good. Okay, so ventilation is just so important. Some other things, like you might want to have some hot mitts and, and or gloves. You know, gloves are great to have because we're going to be dealing with heated frying pans. Um, that's what I use. Now, I'll explain why I don't, um, I opt for that choice instead of a griddle, but you know, you can use a griddle too. But anyways, gloves, a hot mitt. Um, here are my plastic gloves here. I will be using these, so I'm going to set these back here. That's my choice because these are a little bit, you know, harder to work with, but they're more heavy duty, obviously. So safety first. All right, now, um, the equipment now is, you know, it's pretty simple, actually. So what you're going to have here is, um, number one, I, I use an electric frying pan, and you can see that it has this, um, this part here for the thermostat. This is important because... You have some control over obviously turning it on, turning it higher, turning it lower. However, you know, the, um, the, the, the numbers that are on any of these thermostats are very inaccurate. You cannot really rely on them. That's what I found out. It doesn't matter whether it's new, whether it's old, you got it at the thrift store. I got all of mine at the thrift store. So the reason I have a lot of these electric frying pans is because I do also work in encaustic. And that's also why I can share with you a lot of things I've learned over 30 years of working with these things. And um, so I don't have the thermostat in here, but just know that you are gonna probably need one of these. That's my recommended choice. Um, go to the thrift store, pick one up, test it out, make sure it at least turns on. We'll deal with the temperature fluctuations. I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna need a container to put your newly made cold wax medium into, right? And it needs to have a lid, all right? Now I also, as you can see, I've pre-labeled this. It's got the proportions because um, every recipe that you do, okay, if you try this recipe, if you try one on somebody else's recipe, you're gonna wanna remember the proportions. This whole thing that we're doing today is all about proportions of ingredients. How much of this component, how much of this component, and how much of this component. There are really only three ingredients, so that's the good news. I would also label and date, so in here I put you know, the label of the proportions of the components. I also put like the date here because I just want to know, hey, did I make this in March? Did I make it two years ago? Good to know. And, and again, it has a lid and this is a clean brand new container. You can get this at the hardware store. Just pick one up. And they come in different sizes, right? So that's another thing we're going to talk about. What size do you want to get? We'll talk about that. Okay. Now the three main ingredients are um, we've got Damar resin here. I just want to show this to you because this is the one thing that if you cannot buy cold wax medium in your part of the world, um, you probably can find Damar resin because what is this stuff? Well, this is like tree sap. So I'm 
hoping that you can find this material. It comes in these big chunks, right? And because it's tree sap, it's got uh, plant material, it's got, you know, perhaps some insects in there, and you know, you're gonna have to filter that out. And so what I do also though is, this happens to melt at a higher temperature than, this is the other component, very important, you need to have some filtered beeswax, okay? So these are two of the, the main components here. And these are the beeswax pellets. They've been filtered. They could also be bleached. So um, Gamblin Colors recommends to, uh, like a pharmaceutical grade. And this would be considered pharmaceutical grade. What is the difference? Well, it's gonna be super like non-colored. It's gonna be almost white. And that's the advantage. Now, if you don't have access to these little pellets, um, if you don't have access to pharmaceutical grade or filtered, you may be finding yourself going to somebody who has beehives, right? And maybe they can give you some of their beeswax. It'll be very yellow, which means your cold wax medium will be yellow-ish, but you can still use it. That's not a problem. You can do that. So now I want to talk a little bit about these chunks here because that's what I'm demonstrating today is we're going to be doing this recipe using Damar resin because I'm guessing that those of you who cannot find um, cold wax medium already pre-made, you'll probably have a better chance of finding this product in your area. I take this product and I actually wrap these chunks in a cloth like this, okay? So I just kind of, I measure it, I dump it in here, I close it, and then I have a hammer, and then, you know, I hit it, and then what happens? Well, it turns into this powder, okay? And the reason for that is it's gonna melt faster. The thing about Damar resin crystals is that it melts at a higher temperature than beeswax. Now that may not make any difference or mean anything to you right now, but it will pretty soon. Um, we, the reason we want Damar resin crystals to melt faster rather than slower is because it's melting at a higher temperature and it's when you melt beeswax and you melt the resin, that is when things are the most toxic to you. Okay, so the quick, more quickly we can heat things up, get them melted, get them together, the better it will be for your health. Uh, the other main component, uh, well, before I go on, there's an alternate. You can use Gamblin's Gelkid Light or Gelkid in place of the Damar resin. So if you're in the U.S. and you choose not to use this, these crystals, there are a few advantages. Number one, um, it doesn't have any plant debris in it. It doesn't have any, you know, little bugs or anything. It's clear, right? So if you use this, and by the way, the proportion is the exact same, as the crystals, you're not gonna have to filter it. And I'm gonna show you the filter in a second, but so you're gonna you know, save that step. Um, it's gonna actually be a little easier because you don't have to heat it um, higher than the beeswax in order to get it to go into that solution because it's not a crystal. It actually is gonna go in just fine to your melted beeswax. So just letting you know, you can use this in place of the Damar crystal. Also, and this is going to be important for those of you who want to enter the freebie contest here. I want to, there's a question um, that you're going to have to answer. Don't worry if you get it wrong, but um, the reason that question is there is because I want to make sure that you understand that this product right here, Damar Crystals, is not the same as Damar Varnish. Um, Damar Varnish is a completely different item. You cannot make cold wax medium with Damar varnish. I didn't want to make, want to make sure I told you that because some people go to the uh, supply store, art supply store, and they're like, oh, here's Damar varnish. That'll work. No, it won't. You need to have either the crystals or use the Gelkin product, okay? So that's going to be a question, only one question on the entry form. So if you get it wrong, don't worry, you're still eligible to win. But I thought, I want to test and see how well you guys heard me, and I wanted to make sure I told you. So now that I've told you, it's up to you to get that question right, and I hope you get it right. Um, the third component, which um, again, if you live in Europe, you may or may not have access to Gamblin's Ganzel. Why do I like this product though? This would be my top choice, right, for making cold wax medium. The reason being, um, according to Gamblin, it is the safest, effective, odorless mineral spirit on the market, period. Okay, so they've even taken out that one component that even if you did smell it, it's kind of harmful to your health. They've gone to extensive um, degrees to make sure that this is extremely safe. But, uh, and you need this to make cold wax medium. But if you can't get this product, what do you do? Well, if you live in a country that you can't get this product, it's okay. Because if you walk into any hardware store, 
I'm guessing you can get turpentine. I'm guessing you can find some other odorless mineral spirit, right? Um, so again, don't worry if you can't get this product. You can walk into any hardware store and get turpentine. I'm pretty sure Europeans and those of you in Mexico can get that or you can get some other odorless mineral spirit. Okay, so, so again, the three things that you need for um, this cold wax medium recipe is um, either the Damar resin crystal or something like the Galkid. Okay, well, you have a choice, one or the other. And today I'm gonna actually be using the resin crystals because it's a little bit more of a process. It'll take a little longer, which, okay, so that's just one thing. Second component, beeswax. Either get bleached or filtered, you can get triple filtered. The item I have listed on my resource section, I believe is triple filtered. So that just means that when you make your cold wax medium, it's gonna be pretty colorless and you kind of want that, right? When you mix it with your oils, you don't want this really warm. I mean, it's okay if that's all you can get, but you kind of want it to be this that natural color of the oils. Third component, Gamzol or some other odorless mineral spirit or turpentine, any one of those three. So there are a lot of options here but there's only three components, okay? If you can get all of these items, you're gonna choose only three to use. Some other things I like to have handy, a um, couple filters, I mean not filters, but <laughs> funnels. I've got a large funnel, which uh, sits in, in the, um, let's see, where's my can? Well, okay, here it is. When I'm pouring hot beeswax, which is what I will be doing, you can see the little residue here from when I did the last one. It sits right in here, and you can, can see how, if I'm gonna pick this up with hot beeswax and pour it, I'm going to have less spilling than if I don't have that funnel. This is just a canning uh, funnel, I believe. I also have a smaller funnel for, you know, if I'm going back and forth between a bottle like this, I like to uncap it and put this, fil this uh, funnel in here and less spilling, you know, less dribbles, that kind of thing. So it's good to have a couple of these funnels and I'm going to be using this later. So I'll keep that one there. Um, okay, now this. I just want to point out that, not to get too complicated, this is a digital scale. All right? Now, I had a question one time when I, I actually demonstrated this whole process for my Powerful Design and Personal Color course um, artists. And because I did a PowerPoint and I showed them, I had a question from a student who said, well, you're using volume to measure the ratios. Isn't it like isn't it more accurate by weight? So without getting too complicated, I just wanna tell you that you can um, measure using something called a unit of measure. Now this is also important because you need this. You have to choose a unit of measurement and I like to use my, you know, like a tin, like this is a cat food can and you look on the label and this one happens to say um, three ounces. Yeah, exactly three ounces. Um, this one, of course, is unknown. You don't really know what that is, but it's okay. You can still use something like that. Um, this one is bigger, obviously, than this tin, and it one, it, this one is five and a half ounces. It's obviously bigger. So you choose one, and in, in this demo, I'm using this guy, three ounces. Okay, so I'm going to put these away. Now let me explain. Once you choose your unit of measurement, you're going to be using your unit of measurement to measure your odorless mineral spirit, I'm going to choose Gamsol, right? You're going to be using it to measure your beeswax pellets. You're going to be using it to measure your either your Damar resin already, um, you know, crushed like this, or if you choose the gel kit, again, either or, right? But that one unit of measurement gets used for everything. You have a choice with that too. Do you want to just like pour it in here and um, measure it that way? or do you want to um, weigh it? So you can do two things. You can use this, which is called volume. You're using volume. But if I take this and I set it on my scale and I tear it and all that kind of stuff, that's by weight. And I'll just tell you, I'm not gonna do it by weight. I'm gonna do it by volume because that's easier. However, it is more accurate to do it with a scale. Um, if you guys wanna do it that way and you have questions, in the comment section, which is where I'd like you to be asking your questions today, um, I would like you to just say, hey, could you do a demo on doing it by um, weight? Because you, maybe you wanna be more accurate, but it's a little bit too much information for today. I'm not gonna do that. But just know that there are, you know, you can either do it by volume or you can do it by weight. And, uh, but just so you know, the difference is negligible, but there is a difference. 
and I will show you that too when I start measuring things. Okay, so there's my unit of measurement. Okay, so um, another thing you're going to need is a thermometer. Remember I told you that the measuring unit in an electric frying pan, when you get it from, say, um, a thrift store, is not terribly accurate? And even on a griddle, if you choose to use a griddle. Um, being an encaustic artist, I notice that when I put my tins here or there or wherever on a griddle, they're all different temperatures. Some heat up faster than others, so it's very uneven. What I like about the electric frying pan, uh, which you'll see in a few seconds here, is when I start heating things up, um, I'm stirring it, which means that if I hit it with my infrared thermometer, um, it's a, I'm, I'm mixing it so it's all one temperature, even if there are uneven patches in the frying pan. Um, harder for me to do that if it's on the griddle and, and it's inside of a little can or something and I, I can't really even stir it very well. So again, that's my choice for this. And um, let's see here. The thermometer, yes, I'm using the infrared thermometer, but if you have a cooking thermometer, that will work too. But this is rather inexpensive. It's listed on my resources page and it's my choice because I want really good accuracy and it's digital. So I just, all you have to do is you point it in the direction of the liquid, you press a button, and presto, it tells you the temperature of the liquid. It's awesome. It's like one of my other favorite things in the studio. You'll need a spatula, you know, whether it's wooden, whether it's um, silicone, you know, doesn't matter. But what does matter is that whatever you use, don't ever think of taking this into your kitchen and stirring up a batch of spaghetti. All right, not recommended. I wouldn't do that. And then I don't even make spaghetti anyway, so I don't have a very good cook. So, um, all right, so I think we've gone over the equipment. If I've forgotten anything, which I probably have, um, don't worry, I'll, I'll kind of address that in, in, in a few minutes here, because I don't want to forget anything. But now let's get to the recipe. Um, I'm going to walk over here and show you what I've written down here. This is really important. If you have your PDF, you want to really pay attention, right? Because, like I said, it's all about I just talked about the ingredients, beeswax, the gamblin gamzol or turpentine, the damar resin crystals or gamblin galtid or galtid light. Three ingredients that just couldn't be simpler, right? What's important is these ratios here. 11 parts, 11 parts to one. So a lot of this, a lot of this, and just a tiny bit of that, right? Now, obviously, if you use a three ounce cat tin to measure 11, 11 cat, can, cat cans, 11 cat cans, one um, cat can, you're gonna get a certain amount of quantity of cold wax medium. Well, what is that? I mean, when I first did this recipe, I didn't know. What I found though, is that if I wanna make one quart of this, if I want my final product to yield me enough to fill this guy, this is one quart, right? Because they come in different sizes. I need to have the recipe. So all of you have probably baked some muffins or something, and this is a recipe. You know how to half a recipe, you know how to double a recipe, right? So if you want this, this right here, using the three ounce cat can, will actually yield you two of these. That's important to know, because if you're gonna make it with the 11, 11, one, you better buy two of these quarts. If you have it, which is down here, I just have 11, I have 11, and I have one. What is that? Five and a half, five and a half, one half equals one quart. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. One quart, right? Now, if you have a gallon container, because some people might want to make more, well, there are four quarts in a gallon. If this makes two quarts, then doubling it will make you the four quarts or a gallon. I know that's a lot of, you know, it's complex, but again, you can just like pause the slide. You can, you know, copy this into a document and print it if you want. This is actually not in the PDF, but if I were doing this for the very first time, I'd want to know what the yield is, and you have to remember that I'm choosing the three ounce cat can. I am not using the five ounce um, container of pet food. I'm using the three ounce. If I used a five ounce, it's not going to yield you two quarts or one gallon or one quart. It's going to be more because the unit of measurement is larger. Okay, now, we're going to start um, making this cold wax medium because I know you guys are waiting. <laughs> I'm going to put this away, put this away, make the table a little bit easier to see. And again, I want to stress that when you make this, don't be in a hurry. Don't be doing this before, say, you got a party, 
you got a half an hour to do this and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to speed things up because I'm going to be late for my party. Set aside a good couple of hours. And I would have loved for this demo to take like 30 minutes or less, but if it goes beyond that, I'm sorry, but I don't want to rush it because I want to make sure you get the right information. Okay, now I'm seeing over here in the corner of my eye before I go into this one more thing. You need a filter, um, cheesecloth, and a sieve, right? That's my filter. Now this is brand new cheesecloth, but what I wanted to show you, when you use Damar Resin Crystals, not Damar Varnish again, this is what you're going to capture when you pour this liquid, this molten wax and Damar Resin Crystals through. You're gonna get plant material, you know, what else is in there? P looks, pieces of wood, maybe an insect or two, whatever. So I'm gonna use brand new cheesecloth today just so that you can sh see how much is captured in one one batch of this, it won't be that much. But again, you're gonna need um, a sieve and some cheesecloth if you're gonna be using the Damar Resin Crystals. If you use the Galkid this product, you don't need to do the filtering, okay? Because there is no none of that in there. So we're gonna start measuring. Take the unit of measure. Here's my large quantity of beeswax pellets. I'm gonna, again, use my 11 units of measurement. So here's my unit of measurement, cat can, three ounces. So here's, I'm gonna do half the recipe. So one, two, three, four, five, and a half. And I'm just eyeballing that, obviously, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. So I throw it in there, okay? that's. That's how much. I pre-measure everything before I even start to heat anything up, right? So there's that. Now I need um, a half, according to my recipe, I need five and a half, five and a half, and then one half of my um, Damar resin. So here's my Damar resin again, all crushed up, ready to go, ready to crush it up. And I'm just gonna scoop up like a half, so eyeball it and, you know, doesn't have to be exact. Now, if I were weighing it, it would be a little bit more exact, but not, you know, not by much. So there's that ready to go. Um, I'm gonna make these things disappear. And okay, now so I've got two things measured right now. I've got these two things. I'm gonna put this up here for later. And now I'm gonna take my odorless mineral spirit and show you. This is my gamsol. Take the lid off, um, and let me just say that I'm going to actually measure it in here, okay? So you'll see me do this. Um, I'm going to have to move this into, export it to this tin for now. It's all measured and good to go. But because this is my unit of measurement, I have to use the same unit of measurement. I could have another cat tin that's three ounces, but I don't have one here. So, all right, here we go. Five and a half. One. And a half, just like the beeswax pellets. Okay, so eyeball it. There's about a half. I pour it in there, and yes, I did know that this container would hold five and a half. <laughs> okay, so a couple things too, like um, when you're dealing with, uh, especially like the, the solvents here, don't ever place like this guy, this bottle, even uncapped, like this. Let's say you've got it uncapped, and you want to kind of warm it up before you add it to. The heated beeswax. I don't really think there's a reason to do that, but if if anything, um, it just means that when you pour it, if you mix this in with your beeswax, um, it's going to cool down a little slower, actually. Um, what I wouldn't recommend you ever, 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 ever do is take, um, say, this, is, this has water in it, right? And let's say you wanted to heat this up because you wanted to add it to the beeswax at a higher temperature. Um, if you're going to heat this up, number one, take the cap off, set this in the warm water, which would be, at, I'd say about 100 degrees, no more, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius, Fahrenheit. 
Um, and do not ever set this on any heated griddle, frying pan, anything. You never need to, to you never want to heat um, a solvent like this on top of a heated implement. Just not a good idea, okay? So just use, if you want to use a little pan of warmed up water, remember 100 degrees is probably the limit there. And uh, personally, I don't even do that. I don't mess with that. But I just wanted to mention it because I know some people do it that way. Um, however, this right now is just like room temperature water and I'll show you how I use it in a few minutes here, okay? So I've got everything measured. Here's my Gamsol. Put it back here on the table because we're going to start cooking right now. And here's my, my resin. Okay. But, um, and I just wanted to show you how I measure things and, and how that goes. I've got my sieve back there. Let's get rid of this and this. Um, also, um, just so that you know, there are various, before I um, move into this section here, the first time you make it, Okay, it's like anything. There are, you know, you can get different results. And, um, let's see, where is my, <laughs> it's in here, hang on. This is the first batch I made. This is Gamblin's product. Now, when you make it for the first time, this is like the gold standard, right? Let's take a look at what Gamblin has done here. It's, it's really, um, you know, for those of you who are cold wax artists and who have tried this, notice it's pretty firm when I push my finger into it, right? And notice how white it is. It's beautiful stuff. How do they make this? They have industrial strength mixers, um, and so they they combine all the components and you know they get this gorgeous you know consistency. When you do it on your own, um, even if you follow everything that I'm doing completely the same way, and I've been using this, but um, and I made this with the Damar Resin Crystals, which is what I'm doing today. Um, it's not that different, right? I mean, look, it's uh, in terms of consistency, color. If I take my spatula over here, I'll just show you that, look, it's, it's firm. It's got a really nice consistency, right? It's not falling off my spatula, just like this, not falling off the spatula. So obviously what we want is something, you know, close to what we know is done correctly. If you get a slurpy mess, uh, for whatever reason, something went wrong, um, I really would not recommend you melting up or kind of heating up this container of finished product and kind of um, adding more beeswax or adding more of your odorless mineral spirit, simply because in order to do that, you're heating something that has a solvent in it. And personally, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. If you have any questions, though, call Gamblin. That would be my recommendation. Just because I don't do it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. If it's okay, maybe it's okay. But um, I couldn't get a hold of Gamblin for that answer. I was actually waiting to get that answer before the call, before this demo. Couldn't, couldn't get a hold of him. It's a Saturday. So anyways, if you, if you really are off with your mixture, it's too slurpy, it's too thick, it's just not quite right for you, um, again, I would call them and ask them if they would recommend you heat up your pre-made, your pre-made uh, cold wax medium and add cold wax, uh, sorry, add beeswax to it to make it firmer, add Gamsol to make it more slurpy. I would just ask if it's okay to heat, reheat this up. I personally don't feel like that would be safe. It's not something I would probably want to do. I just thought I would share that with you. Okay, now we're going to move over here and I think I have everything I need. Okay, so... I wanted to uh, show you over here. I'm gonna put my gloves on, okay? Got my gloves on. Here's my um, heated frying pan, and it's plugged in. You know, I'm gonna use my thermometer, and I also just want to let you know I've got parchment paper here. You don't have to, but if you have any spills or whatever, it's super easy for you to get off those spills um, when you have parchment paper because it just comes right off, all right? Uh, so. Now, I, what, what you're going to do is you're going to take your Damar resin. Um, like any cooking show, right? If I put this in here right now and started heating it, it would take time. And I, I wanted to save some time. So this is it. This right here is Damar resin crystals. I've already put it in there. This proportion, you know, the, the one part, the cat tin, half of a cat tin, it's already melted because that's how cooking shows are. 
But um, I took a little bit of this pre-measured quantity, right? To get it going, um, I added just like maybe this much or maybe, you know, like this much. And I just added it with the crystals to get it going. And now temperature is another thing we really need to talk about right now. Because the reason why you need ventilation when you are making cold wax medium or if you're an encaustic artist is because you're heating things like demo resin and you're heating beeswax and these two components have different melting rates, okay? Damar resin melts at around 220. That's why I added it first. Why? Because it's kind of viscous. See how it's kind of like gooey, right? It's like honey, actually. If I hadn't added any beeswax to this, it'd actually be more honey-like. It'd be really thick. And that's why you add just a tiny bit of that pre-measured beeswax so that it's, you know, kind of like gets it going. But my temperature, when I hit it with my infrared thermometer here, I was looking for 220 or, you know, maybe 200, whatever, whatever it takes to get the Damar resin crystals to melt. Um, you don't want to go really much over 220 because what happens? You're going to start seeing smoke, okay? If you ever see smoke, that's the part that's going to give you health problems over a period of time. So try to avoid the smoking. That's why you need your ventilation. Um, if you're super sensitive, remember, have that mask on. You got to protect your health. Now, notice it's not smoking here. And um, so now that the demo resin is melted, remember, I just, or before this demo started, I put this in there. It's melted, and now what's the next step? The next step is to take your pre-measured beeswax, and you're gonna now lower that temperature, because it, it had to be at around 220 to melt the resin, but this melts at 150. So the reason I only put a little bit of pellets in there is because um, I don't wanna burn these pellets that melt at a lower temperature. I want this whole thing to be around 150, if possible. Now here, I'm gonna add this pre-measured beeswax. Okay, so this is the uh, one, of, one of the three components that you need to make cold wax medium. There it is, I've all pre-measured. And I can start to um, stir that into the resin, okay? It takes time, give yourself time. Um, I'm checking my temperature here. I don't want to turn, I, this is actually already kind of, I marked it with a Sharpie because I know where 150 is in terms of this frying pan. Every frying pan's different, right? So um, where I marked mine, it actually says like, you know, 200. Well, I don't want 200, I want 150. So notice it's melting, keep stirring it. Take your, you know, silicone spatula, wood spatula, whatever it is, just um, stir that around. It'll melt pretty quickly. Okay, so while that's happening, um, make sure that you've labeled dated, you know, your can here. So I've got my date, I've got the quantity, I've got the ingredients on here, I'm using 11 to 11 to one. I could have added that I'm using the three ounce, you know, measuring container, you can add that too. Just make sure you do that and then have it ready to go. And here it is. Now I'm gonna put my wide mouth funnel on top of it because when I pour this into that, you know, it's hot, I'll be unplugging it, but I'm, I'm trying to prevent a lot of spillage, wasting material. So that's why you want to have that funnel there. Waiting, and it's melting. This is melting nicely, and I can see what temperature we're at here. It's a little bit below 150, but I'd rather it be a little bit lower than too high. I can just bump it up a tiny bit. And you know, the, the smallest micro adjustment on any dial of one of these things is gonna make a pretty big impact. And it depends on where I point this. Here it's like 144, here it's 145, here it's 122. Again, that's why if you stir it, now if I stir it, I should have a more consistent reading no matter where I am pointing the laser in this container. That's why I like the frying pan versus the griddle. Um, here's a griddle over here. You, know, you can kind of see that that is a nice flat surface. But again, if I were doing, um, if I put a can on there and melted my beeswax in there, um, it's going to be a little harder for me to monitor temperature and because temperature is so critical when you're doing this, I choose to um, use the electric frying pan with the ability to stir and monitor the temperature as I go. Now it's melting pretty fast and uh, the safe temperature when you're doing this, because 
you're gonna say, oh my gosh, I'm at 160. Oh my gosh, I'm at 170. Oh my gosh, I'm at 180. You try to be in the range of 150 to 180 when you're doing this. Don't expect that you're gonna be able to keep it at 150. That's not gonna happen. That would be a perfect world, but <laughs> doesn't happen. You're fine as long as you kind of stay between 150 and 180. You know, just 180 is kind of that point where beeswax starts to break down and becomes, you know, there's gonna be more like toxicity if you go above that 180 mark. So again, look for a range of 150 to 180. That's not in your PDF. You might wanna write that down. As far as the resin goes, try not to go over the 220 degrees and everything I'm talking about is Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Okay, so this is almost melted and that didn't take so long. Um, what you're trying to do in this stage is, you know, obviously keep that constant temperature, but also you're mixing the resin with the beeswax. Those are two of the three components that are really important for cold wax medium, right? So here we go, almost all melted, we're good. All right, so now, and, okay, we're right at 180, so that's kind of a, the temperature we're ending with. Okay, so now I'm gonna unplug this, and again, just keep in mind this is hot, right? And um, I'm going to pour this into my wide mouth funnel, the whole thing. I'm trying not to spill it. Okay. Now you don't have to get every last bit of this. You know, you could, you could take this, I guess, and if you really, you know, want to, you can do that. After all, you know, if you have it, if you can manage it, because it takes a bit of coordination, but don't worry about getting every last drop. That's not so important. Okay, now I've got two components in there. I need the third one. What is that? That's Gamsol. But before I do that, I want this temperature to go down, okay? Because one thing we didn't talk about is flash point. This is Gamsol, okay? Whether you have turpentine, odorless mineral spirit of another kind, or Gamsol, the approximate flash point is going to be 144 degrees Fahrenheit. So, what is the temperature of this right now? It is about 180. Okay, so I'm going to actually stir this. I'm gonna actually put it in a little container of just room temperature water, and I'm gonna stir it, because I want this temperature to go down to around 120 or 100. Why? Because I do not wanna pour something that has a flash point of 144 into a hot liquid that's at 180. That is asking for trouble, okay? So now I'm stirring this and we are now right away below 100, we're good. So now I can take this out, I can add this, and use my funnel again, here it is, okay? This is my third component. Let me just double check the temperature one more time, make sure that we're well below. Yeah, oh, you know what, it's still too high. It's like still it's funny because um again let's see what's happening right here I said it was lower now it's gonna take a little bit longer I think what happened was I put it in this thing of water and it maybe it was like just hitting a part of it that was cooling down faster so I'm gonna keep stirring it here yeah it needs to come down more and keep in mind that when I'm stirring this now that I've um you know, it's just beeswax, but once I add the gamzol to it or the odorless mineral spirit, what's happening, as soon as you pour that into this warmer liquid, it's gonna vaporize, okay? And what that means is that you kind of wanna stir things quickly um, with your spatula as much as possible. You wanna integrate it in there so it's a homogeneous mixture and then cap it right away because the minute that, that gamzol starts to vaporize, it's gonna go into the air and you're inhaling it. Now, if you have ventilation, that's another reason why you have to have ventilation, but I'm just saying, even if you have ventilation, even if you have a respirator on, you wanna do it quickly, right? Okay, so I'm getting the temperature to um, come down here. This is the part of the demo I knew would take some time, but again, I'm not going to cut corners for the sake of time just to make this demo go faster. I would rather you see that, hey, you better slow down don't be in a hurry, because this is the way it is, all right? This is like a real demo. If I were doing this on a recorded video, I would be fast forwarding and, you know, presto, you'd think, oh, that was like less time, but this is like the way it actually is. Now we're down to about 140. And again, I, I probably could have added a little bit of ice to the water, but I actually don't want it to cool too quickly. So make sure my, my 
pointer of the, razor, the laser is pointing at the liquid and not on the side of the can. Just take your time. Oh, we didn't play our music. <laughs> we don't have any music. We were going to have some music for you, but um, next time. So again, while you're waiting, um, for those of you who might have joined the call late, um, those of you who would like to enter the freebie, um, all you have to do is wait till after this demo is over, go to my YouTube channel, find this video, How to Make Cold Wax Medium, and under the description of this video and the first comment, you'll find um, a link where you go to enter this contest. And you can win either um, this mixture that I'm making right now of Cold Wax Medium, that's for U.S attendees only because I may have to ship it and I'm not sure that it would go through customs all that well um, coming from me. I have a, a silicone messer meister for um, international attendees today for today's call and then I have an introductory set of oil paints for somebody who's in my PDPC course. So if you're on this call um, you have till 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time today to enter and then then the link disappears and I pick the winner tomorrow so if you're liking this demo if you're liking YouTube live on my channel and if you're liking um, giveaways and that kind of thing please let me know by hitting like really appreciate it and also I really appreciate it if you're subscribed to my channel that's important too I ask you that on the entry form because you kind of have to be subscribed to win okay so now just seeing how we're doing I think we're good we're down to like 120 I'm going to add the Gamsol now, okay? I'm going to put my little funnel here. You can see how the wax is starting to actually cool to the point where it's getting a little bit white. So I'm going to add this. And now I want to stir it really fast because now it's starting to vaporize, right? I talked about the vaporization of that. And I want to stir this quickly, get it all integrated in there. And then I'm going to cap it right away. All right, so just go ahead and integrate that in there. You got three components: beeswax, Damar resin crystals, not Damar varnish, and your odorless mineral spirit. Okay, so it looks kind of curdly. That's normal, but don't worry about that. Just stir it as well as you can. Actually, take it out of the water now. Okay, and then what you're going to do? Because you know this still feels really warm the can. Um, you're not going to use this until it's completely cool. Give it overnight, you know, um, just let it sit on your table with the lid on and then come in tomorrow, come in the next day. When you open up your can, it'll be that really nice cold wax medium. Okay, so there we go. Good enough. I'm going to put the lid on. Um, here it is. Okay, so that's it everybody. Um, that's pretty much it. So. Um, I haven't been able to really watch for comments, obviously, right? Um, so again, if you have comments, questions, um, uh, great, because I love questions and I definitely will answer them. Um, they're all important. And um, rather than in the chat, you know, put them in the comment section, I'll be sure to see them. And uh, aside from that, um, thank you for joining me. Really enjoyed um, doing this and it's really a lot of fun. So again, if you like this kind of content on my channel, if you like the lives and you like the giveaways, hit like. Uh, that really means a lot to me. So thank you all for being here. Awesome. Have a great Saturday. 